this a little bit. Okay, hey guys, welcome back to my project management sandbox. This is Chris and here we talk about professional development, career and technology and managing projects. So the today's topic is the software development life cycle. Why is it important and why do you need to know it as a project manager? So let's dive in. Before we start, let's make sure that you are subscribed and your notification bell is tapped. Otherwise, chances are that you're going to be missing a lot of value that I'm going to be sharing moving forward on my channel. So, waiting for a couple of seconds for you to tap the subscribe button, to tip the notification bell, and we will move on. Now, let's talk about the Software Development Lifecycle, or SDLC. And basically, what the heck is that? So when we talk about the digital products or software products or hardware products, so anything that is related to technology, uh, when it comes to delivering those products, all of them are passing through the same stages to be created, starting from A and ending to Z. And this specific flow that products are passing through while being created and delivered to the end users is called the software development lifecycle. I was actually wondering where has it come from originally and by googling a little bit it appears that initially it was called the system development lifecycle. Originally, it appeared in the Global Business Information Technology book that was uh, written by Geoffrey Elliott. Basically, this book explains on how to manage complex systems in information technology and uh, how to operate with them. So, that was the original source of the software development lifecycle that we are currently using in our day-to-day -day activities in managing tech projects. So, why is it important? Why should you know it as a tech project manager? And how are we going to use it in leading projects? So, first and foremost, as I have mentioned before, this flow or framework, if you would like to, explains on how actually the tech projects are being delivered from the starting point, like when we have only the idea of the product, to the final phase when we have delivered this product to the end users and transferred it to maintenance. This means that using this structure we can understand where exactly you are located within the cycle and how should you behave within this specific phase. When I say how should you behave in this specific phase, what I actually mean is by understanding where you're currently at with your project, you can clearly see what actions are expected from you to deliver this specific stage of the project efficiently and what risks can you expect in this specific stage, which means that you would be able to first forecast them and secondly to understand on how to prevent or eliminate those risks. Now let's dive a little bit deeper and let's clarify what actually the software development lifecycle consists of. Hey, let's pause for a second and give this video a like. Firstly, that will give me an understanding that you are enjoying the episode and getting value out of the content that I am sharing with you here, and secondly, that motivates me a lot for creating more and more videos for you. So, give it a like and let's move on. So, let's discuss those phases one by one. The number one phase is research and analysis. Basically, this phase is called to get the project started. I mean, uh, this is the very first step when people come up with some specific idea of a product and how do they actually see this product in the real life. During this phase, we are identifying what actually should be done, how this should be done and what's going to be the end result. And the outcome of this phase, to me personally, is the business case of the product. So that gives us a clear picture of what problem are we going to solve by delivering the solution. And uh, by the way, I do have the video about the business case, so make sure to check it out. Now, when we understand what actually are we going to do and why are we going to do this, aka what problem of the users are we going to solve with our product, we 
you're moving to phase number two. And this is design and planning. I have combined this in one step because first, when we understand what we need to do, we need to put it in some sort of visualization to clearly see if we are on the same page and if everybody is understanding the solution in the same way. When this is done, we need to map it on the specification and understand uh, basically the key criteria of the project delivery. Those criteria are the basic project management KPIs, which we are normally targeting when we are delivering the products. And these are budget, timeline, and definitely the project scope. So scope is what we are going to do, and this was identified during the research and analysis phase. Now we need to plan this out and determine how much the solution is going to cost and when we are able to deliver it. When this tricky phase is done and when we have the plan in place, the timeline is built, the estimates are there and we have calculated the project cost, time to get things started. And we are moving into the actual development phase when we are, as project managers, need to make sure the team has all the resources that they need in order to efficiently deliver the project and to get things done on their end. And also, we are here to facilitate and streamline the delivery process, make sure that communications are efficient and everybody is receiving the necessary information timely. Definitely, I'm talking about this on a very, very high level. There are also a lot of, uh, let's say, internal flows that we as project managers need to approach and to eliminate, like, for instance, ongoing risk, like change requests. And as you know, when changes are coming in, they are always leading to some sort of risks. So this is also what we are doing from the project management perspective during the development phase. Next step is the quality assurance one, where testing and verification and the idea of the stage is to make sure that we are keeping the errors away from the client's hands or from the customer hands and to make sure that what we have done is aligned to be the original idea with the project scope or with the MVP scope. Right? So basically, we need to make sure that we have done what we have planned to do. Now let's imagine we are good, everything is perfectly done according to the original scope, the quality is mind-blowing, there are no bugs, no errors, and we are ready to go to production. Now this is the important stage when we are giving what we have promised to the end users. And this is not actually one or two hour activity, especially from the project management perspective, because at this stage, first we need to efficiently get prepared, then we need to make sure that everything is going according to the plan, and sequentially, again, we need to make sure when people are approaching the product in the live environment, they're not facing any errors as well. Well, I hope that was not too much overwhelming. Now we are in the final sixth stage and this is transferring the project to maintenance. Basically, in other words, when you are buying, I don't know, a TV, you are buying it with a box and instructions, right? And the same relates to the products or tax solutions as well. Like when you are giving the solution to the end users, you need to make sure that they know how to operate with the solution. And this is the core idea of transferring projects from the active development phase to the maintenance phase and making sure that people have all the necessary resources to efficiently manipulate and operate with the solution that we have provided to them. Now we have passed through all of the software development lifecycle stages and hopefully that became a little bit more transparent to you. Definitely, this also overlaps with the project management methodologies and depending on the chosen methodology, this software development lifecycle may vary a little bit uh, from one methodology to another and not only this, this can also become a repeatable and overlapping activity during the whole project delivery flow. So, let me know in comments what else would you like to know about the software development lifecycle or about the project delivery methodology. And also, 
Don't forget to give this video a like. So thanks for watching and see you next time.